everyone, just me this week. Welcome back to another chatty video. Today we're going to talk about all of the essentials that I think you need if you are going to dance college, dance uni, and this is sort of like a crash course for what I had in my bag, what I think you should put in your bag, um, and things to have at home in case of a show or an assessment. So let's start with a little pouch in your bag. I call this the everything you need pouch. And this is sort of like everything that you would go to for an emergency at dance college. So if I had a headache, paracetamol, like painkillers, paracetamol and ibuprofen, I would make sure you always had in your bag. There's nothing worse than doing ballet class with like a headache. It's the worst. We've all been there. So make sure that you have those in your bag or whatever you use to as a painkiller. Then I would put in there plasters for blisters or um, if you like graze yourself. They're a really good thing to have. Um, even if like you're wearing a new dance shoes and you've got like a bit of like a sore on the back of your ankle, it's just so helpful to have those. Um, and then I would have some sort of hand sanitizer. I I don't know what it is, but like after bar, you know when everyone was just touching it, it's just best to like have a quick hand sanitizer and then you're off and you're clean. Especially like around COVID time, this was like a real essential in my bag. Just because I didn't like the hand sanitizer at college. Um, so having like my own was really helpful. Um, what else did I have in my pouch? I had like for for uterus bearing people, all of the sanitary products I'd have in that pouch. Then this was actually a college requirement for us. We had to have a ice pack. So you can either get those ones that break and you can use them instantly, or you can get those pouches that you can have hot or cold water in. These are actually really helpful because whether you need a hot or cold, you it's just one pouch and it it condenses and then you fill it up and it it's like a bag basically and um, so I had that in my bag in case of an emergency then it goes without saying if you're like diabetic or need like sugar supplements or any other supplements that's the pouch that I would put it in so like I have endometriosis so my endo medication went in there um, and it was just something that I would put in every single bag so if I went out at the weekend I'd have that pouch if I went out uh, if I went to college I'd have that bag pouch in my bag it was just one that stayed with me wherever I went I had like lip balm in there as well um like a little hand cream just stuff like that essentials that you need whether you're a dance student or not but specifically for every bag then let's talk more dance wear so my college was a um, musical theatre college we did dance and we did acting and singing um this meant that we had dance uniform for like ballet, um, just tech, like we had to wear specific things like tight blacks, ballet tights, um, black leotards, ballet shoes. So I had a compartment in my bag, which was just for like shoes. So in there, I'd switch them out depending on what classes I had that day, but I had ballet shoes, I had point shoes, tap shoes, um, I had my Laduka boots. So I had my black um, Laura boots, uh, the three inch ones and then I also had the nude tan uh, three inch I can't remember what the uh, what they were called um, but they went in my shoe compartment what other shoes did we have I feel like I'm missing one oh commercial heels which like for auditions and stuff was good um, or commercial heel classes and then obviously like just a trainer for jazz and for jazz, I would suggest having like a soft shoe um, that you can move in because you will go to probably go to most auditions in like a soft trainer when you can still like extend your foot in so that you still can make nice lines. Um, the Nike, the like bendy Nike ones are good. And I think can New Balance do a, a soft shoe? I'm not sure. And there's this thing that people get called like block turning pads and you can stick them to the underneath of your shoe and it just makes it easier for you to turn a lot of people in my year had those and they said that they were absolutely brilliant in terms of ballet at my college the uniform was skin colored tights a black leotard and then ballet shoes that matched the tights 
and you had the option to wear a skirt or not. So for ballet, I would have a range of black leotards so that I could um, put them in the wash when I got home and then the next day have a new one. And I had, um, they were the same amount of tights as the days of the week. I think I had about seven pairs of tights and I had all convertibles because sometimes like we had ball ballet and we'd take our shoes off for ball ballet and just have our feet so you could roll the convertible tights which was really really handy and having seven meant that I could then put them in the wash and have a new pair each day because tights are the sort of thing that get just really like it's that material that if your shoes are bad or your feet are sweating it carries a bad smell so make sure you have enough tights that you can wash them and change them up regularly. While we're talking about tights, I didn't really wear black footless tights in class as much. I was more of like a leggings sort of girl. But when it came to shows and uh, assessments, they'd be like, like leotards and tights or um, tight fitting blacks, um, but no midriff. So in that case, I would wear a, leotard, a black leotard and then black tights, footless tights over the top. So I think footless tights is like an essential. And then also for shows, I would say flesh tights with the um, either convertible or the ones that just cut off at the ankle. You find yourself in like costumes that reveal your legs and some people don't like their legs out. And, and sometimes they request that you wear tan tights. So that is something that is a pain if you don't have because you can't just buy them in the shop like dance specific ones i would have a pair of those at your house just in case you get into that situation where they ask you for a pair of tan tights this is another thing i didn't mention with the shoes jazz shoes now in my year no one wore jazz shoes it was very rare that someone would stick a jazz shoe on we were all quite we were we'd wear trainers like soft trainers like i was meant like i mentioned um but for shows and stuff it was choreographers and creatives would would say like can you wear a jazz shoe and people would turn around and be like well I don't have jazz shoes I did have jazz shoes because on my uniform list at the beginning of the year it said jazz shoes and even though I hadn't worn them much in the past I think I used to wear them for my modern exams um I had a suitable pair of jazz shoes that I could use but some people are like, I don't have them. So if you don't usually wear jazz shoes, but are going to dance college, it's a good thing to buy because you will at some point use them. Same goes with knee pads. Now on my uniform list, it said bring knee pads. And I was like, what are we going to need knee pads for? But there are some contemporary teachers or jazz teachers that do request that you bring knee pads. So even though it sounds like, why am I being asked to bring knee pads? Are they going to stick me on a skateboard? Like, no, sometimes you just do floor work and it's just to protect your knees. Then as staples, I always used to have like a few black cami tops, a few black like long sleeve tops and short sleeved. Then like a plain white top. Um, a few like sports bra sets for auditions and stuff. Um, and black leggings I used to wear very often. At my college, so we had like mostly a, a dress code for dance classes. Um, as I said, ballet and jazz tech were like tight fitting. And for acting and singing, it was kind of, you could wear what you want. So I would usually just stick a hoodie or trackies over my dance stuff because then it'd be quite common that I'd then go to a jazz class or then go to a singing class. So it was quite often that I'd like over or underdress my um, my outfits. And because singing wasn't uniformed and neither was acting, some acting teachers do did ask for blacks only. Um, and in musical theatre, sometimes you'd have to go as like audition ready. And um, we'll get to that later. Um, but generally you could just stick your hoodie on over the top and that would be absolutely fine so i would also suggest having like a couple of hoodies and then you can mix and match them put one in the wash and still have one to use same with tracksuit bottoms and zip ups are quite good especially when you're doing shows because they don't affect your hair and makeup when you're just putting them on so i would say zip ups or hoodies or cardigans that sort of thing let's talk about audition attire so my teachers always used to say that you can tell a fresh grad coming into the industry going to auditions and I found that really interesting because at the time I was just like well everyone just wears this and it's because you're like in college it's like a closed bubble but then obviously when you graduate you're out into the big wide world 
and what people used to do at my dance college I don't know whether it was just like a trend at my college or whether other colleges did it as well but you know those Laduka boots people used to wear them as their singing heels and my teachers were like it's so dancey like you wouldn't just wear them out into the street so why are you wearing them to your singing audition and I was like huh that's so true so I stopped wearing my Laduka boots to MT and you just stick a wedge on like stick a heel on or stick trainers on like it obviously depends on the style of the audition if you're going for more of like a classical musical say like one of the traditional ones like Oklahoma you obviously wouldn't go in like a converse you'd probably like suit more the style of the show you're going to I don't know like I suppose it depends on like the creative team and your personality um but yeah not a Duke boot I don't think I don't think there's any case where you would wear a Laduka boot for like an acting singing audition. If you if you have an idea of a show that you like, you wouldn't wear Laduka boots for a singing or acting audition, put it in the comments because I can't think of one off the top of my head. But from that tangent, I meant to say, just have like a few nice outfits in your wardrobe at home. Like I used to go for the slip dresses and like a long sleeve t-shirt underneath. I think they were just like nice and cash and I'd wear my hair down like a bit different from what I would look like in a dance class. And it was nice to experiment from week to week what I could wear and what I felt comfortable singing in. Um, and the teachers would also give you feedback like for that, for this show, like you probably wouldn't wear this. It's hard, but if you have those options you can experiment and then you'll be able to feel as comfortable as you can more basics a water bottle like it sounds silly but just get a big one because there's nothing worse than having to run out of a class because you need to fill your water bottle up so if you get one of those big ones i think they're like there's the 2.5 litre ones but then there's one litre ones and i used to bring the one litre ones in because i'd get through those in, in a class um having those uh, having a decent bottle is good because also you need to stay hydrated. Another basic is a notebook and pen. This is so useful and different subjects will probably ask you to have different notebooks and pens because um, for example at my college in voice or acting they would take our notebooks at the end of term and mark them and it'd be part of your assessment grade and um, it's just helpful if you get a note or a correction in a dance class or at a show or before an assessment you can just jot it down and then when you're doing like your self-reflection or your self-rehearsal self-practice you can then go back through those notes and work through them instead of remembering them in the spur of the moment in the class and then getting home and being like mm, what was that correction I got um, so I'd say a notebook and pen is really, really handy. And the teachers like love it when you get a correction and then you go over and write it down. It really shows that you are dedicated, you value their their teaching expertise and knowing that you're going away and then like working on those notes is just really, really good work ethic. You can never go wrong with a notebook and a pen. Then in like singing classes, we always used to bring our phones to record note bashes. And in like MT, if you had harmonies, record the note bashes of those. And this was really, really helpful. If you have like a recording device or a phone, I would really suggest um, bringing that to those lessons. Even at the end of dance classes, sometimes the teachers would say, like tap for example we did that quite a lot the teachers would say do you want to record um just this count of eight so that you can go home and work on it and that was really helpful just having that video of it so that you then you can go home and watch the video and not only self-correct but then learn the bits you're not as confident on or go over bits that you didn't pick up as well as you could have in the class at my college we had pilates now i don't know if all colleges do do pilates but i had my own equipment so i would bring a pilates mat a pilates hoop a ball and some therabands and the hooped resistance bands and i just preferred having my own equipment and also having your own equipment is fantastic because then you can go home and do it as well because with the college equipment obviously it stays in the cupboard having your own means that you can then do it on holiday in the holidays like you can do it at home it's so much easier in my opinion 
but obviously like not everyone can justify getting the Pilates equipment. We also did ball ballet and that required a big yoga ball, like one of those maternity them <laughs> yoga balls. And there we go. I think that is all. That's just a little rundown of like absolute basics, but I'm sure once you get there, the teachers will tell you what you need. And of course, Amazon is just a click of a finger away. <laughs> So don't stress. I hope you have a lovely time at your new college, uni, and see you in the next video.